Welcome back to another episode of Unplugged where we discuss a disease in an integrated fashion. We look at a disease from its multiple perspectives including the clinical finding, including the radiological finding, the treatment and the pathological findings. Today I have taken a case which is which we have not uh, you know taken so far in the Unplugged series, we have taken an ophthalmological case. And with me today we have Dr. Saurabh who is going to talk about the clinical case scenario. I will look at the radiological finding and together we'll try to look at the treatment options and the histological markers of the disease. You will enjoy this case because this is one of its kind discussion because whenever you look at teaching videos on the YouTube and on the social media available, most of them give you a single perspective. Our videos are intended to give you an integrated approach and do write back to us in the comment sections after this video because we, we look forward to hearing from you. Let me invite Dr. Saurabh. Okay, hello friends. Uh, so we'll discuss uh, ophthalmological case. Uh, so this is a 65 year old male uh, which presents with the OPD uh, with history of a chronic headache, right eye pain, photopsia. Photopsia means flashes in front of light, uh, flashes in front of eye, along with gradual diminution of vision in the right eye of three months duration. The general and systemic examination was normal. So, on examination, ophthalmological examination, the first obviously will do the visual acuity. The right eye vision was, on presentation was, counting finger close to face, which are very decreased. The intraocular pressure of the right eye was about 20 millimeters, the left eye was 12 millimeters. So, here, the first thing here we should look at, see, there is a 5 millimeter difference between the two intraocular pressure of the both eyes. So, whenever this is, uh, there is a difference like this. We have to suspect that something is going on in the right eye. Though it is below the level, less than 21 millimeters, still the level, the difference is more than 5 millimeters. So we should look carefully that something is going on in the right eye and obviously the presenting vision is al always, is also less in this case. So we would like to do a indirect ophthalmoscopy to look at the retina in this condition. We are supposing in this question that the anterior segment, the cornea, the lens, everything is normal. So the next step we will do for the indirect ophthalmoscopy and look at the retina. So this is the indirect ophthalmoscope, it's not in the, it is a fundus photography picture of the right eye. How do you know this is the right eye? So this is the optic disc and this is the fovea. As I always say that the patient in ophthalmology, if image is given, you always imagine that the patient is standing face to face towards you. So if the patient is standing face to face, the fovea is always temporal. So this eye, you can see the optic disc is nasal, the fovea is temporal. So this is the right eye of the patient. And here you can see there is a big round mass in the retina or maybe behind the retina. How do you know that it is in the retina or behind the retina in the choroid from the vessels? So we can see the retina vessels. We know that these are the retinal vessels and the mass appears to be behind the retinal vessels. So we are presuming that this is a mass which is not in the retina but behind the retina in the choroid. Maybe it's a mass, so we will look into some tumors of the retina, which is choroidal melanoma. It's the most common primary intraocular tumor of the eye. Or there can be other conditions as well. See, it's a dark shape, so we are looking into melanin pigments. So it can be melanoma, but it can be in 25% patients, it can be amelanotic as well, right? So it can be choroidal metastasis, it can be choroidal osteomas or choroidal hemangiomas. So how do we look? How do we explain this from this? How do we explain the history? Why was the patient having uh, pain, right eye pain? Why? Because in choroidal melanomas, there can be impingement of the posterior ciliary vessels, which is present in the suprachoroidal space. Why there was photopsia or flashes? Because of impingement of the rods and cones. And always when the patient has see fovea or macular involvement, the patient comes with photopsia or metamorphosia means distorted visions because of irritation of the rods and cones. Then why was the patient having gradual diminution of vision? Of course, if the fovea is involved, which is a most, uh, the maximum vision comes from the fovea, which is you can see is involved in this case, the vision can be less. Also, there can be associated detachment of the retina, there can be cystoid macular edema, which can lead to diminution of vision. So from this we would like to know, we would like to confirm whether it is a melanoma or metastasis or hemangioma and we should do a radiological investigation or imaging in this case. So for that I would like to ask Dr. Sumir sir to tell us about the radiological imaging. 
Now, uh, thank you, Saurabh, for you know sending the patient to us for an ultrasound. So, when we are looking at an ultrasound of the eye, you look at both the B scan as well as the A scan. A scan is this graph that you see at the bottom. B scan is this two-dimensional image that you see here. You can see this. You are easily able to pick up a dome-shaped mass here, corresponding to what we saw in the uh, fundus Im imaging. This is there's a dome-shaped mass here, and the key to understand here is when you see the first peak here, and then we, you, if you see there is a steep fall here, and you see a lot of low internal echoes. And th this means that the kappa angle here is very steep. Now, this is a good differentiator between a melanoma and a hemangioma. Because a hemangioma would have vascular spaces. So when the sound hits those uh, septa in between the vascular spaces, it would have higher reflectivity. Here you are able to see low internal reflectivity, which is uh, goes towards melanoma. Another differential that we had you know, considered in the clinical picture was the choroidal osteoma, but then it would have calcification, which would look very hyperechoic on the ultrasound imaging, which helps us to you know, kind of uh, you know, narrow down the differential again towards the melanoma on the basis of ultrasound picture. In addition to this, we are also able to see the retinal detachment on the B scan here. What else can we do? We can also look at the vascularity by looking at the Doppler image. If you look at the color Doppler image of this patient, you can see a feeding vessel at the base of the tumor with some internal vascularity. This is slightly different from a hemangioma. Hemangioma would not have such a feeding vessel at the base. It would have more spotty diffuse vascularity in it itself. Second thing is that although in this patient on the ultrasound, we are able to see a dome shaped mass. But if the lesion is breaching the brush membrane, it might look like a mushroom shaped lesion as well, which is again a typical picture of melanoma. But what can we do radiologically to further diagnosis? So melanoma has a very typical MRI appearance, which is very, very important to remember and understand here. So although it would look little difficult to you in the first go, plus look at the globe, you can see in the first image the globe is looking dark, in the second the globe is looking white. So that is a T1 weighted image, a T2 weighted image. And the structures that you see at the back, these are your extraocular muscles and in the center you can see the optic nerve. So look at the lesion here, the, the, the disease here is looking the dome shaped lesion but it is hyper intense on T1, hypo intense on T2. Because of the inherent magnetic properties of the melanin, melanoma has a unique MR appearance with that it is low signal on T2 weighted image. Hemangioma typically would be hyper intense on T2 weighted image. It would not be low signal here. This fall in T2 signal is due to the melanin content of melanoma. And if you do a fat suppressed contrast enhanced image, you will see moderate enhancement here. Again, that is because of the moderate vascularity that we saw in the Doppler imaging. So to put it in a nutshell, the radiological imaging that we see here are T1 hyper intense, T2 hypo intense, moderate enhancement on post gadolinium imaging, which is further you know, confirming the diagnosis of melanoma for us. And how we have been able to rule out hemangioma was that one was hemangioma would be T2 hyper intense. Second was hemangioma would not have a feeding vessel on Doppler that we are able to see here. And the low reflectivity was further in favor of melanoma. Hemangioma because of the septa between the vascular spaces would have higher reflectivity. So this is uh, the radiological picture in a nutshell. Now I'll invite you know Saurabh. We have seen the radiological picture, but what to do next? How to further proceed in the investigation part? Let me ask Dr. Saurabh to help us. Uh, thank you, Samir, sir, for uh, confirming to us that it is a choroidal melanoma. So now we have diagnosed it is a choroidal melanoma, but we don't jump to the treatment first. We have to look whether this melanoma, though we know from MRI it is spreading or not. But the important point is, it is not like retinoblastoma, it is not the most common spread, it is not via optic nerve. It is via vortex veins, which is very difficult to know. And most common spread is to the liver. So first thing we have to do, investigation, we have to look for the liver enzymes and also the imaging ultrasound, at least for the looking of distant metastasis to the liver. Plus, there can be local, uh, metastas local spreading as well to the sclera which we can lo uh, look uh, clinically also which we can see on ultrasound of the or orbit or eye which was not seen in our case right so after uh, diagnosing it's a choroidal melanoma we have to treat so the treatment uh, depends on a very uh, uh, very common study which was done in uh, ocular melanoma um, 
which is COMS, Collaborated Ocular Melanoma Study, in which we divide the melanoma into three groups, small, medium and large, depending on the apical height and the basal diameter. So the treatment protocol is also based on that. So in very small tumors, sometimes the study shows that we can observe the tumors as well, whether it is progressing or not. And there are some features which gives us differentiating point whether this tumor is progressing or not. For example, if the tumor has some orange pigments clinically on indirect ophthalmoscopy, if you see some orange pigments or absence of drusens, that goes more in favor of malignancy. Even though the tumor is small, we should go for the treatment. For medium tumors or those tumors which are small but are progressing, we would like to do a localized therapy which is known as brachytherapy in which the most common isotope we use is iodine which is to irradiate the tumor known as localized radiation but sometimes the tumor if the tumor is very posterior or the tumor is very large we cannot do this plaque brachytherapy for that cases we have to do, go for external beam irradiation or stereotactic radiotherapy this picture which you are seeing is some tantalum markers. For example, this is the sclera. This is the posterior. The tumor is very posterior, close to the optic nerve. So in that case, we cannot do the plaque. We cannot put the plaque brachytherapy. So in that cases, we can do some proton, helium or tantalum markers for the posterior or the large lesions. And lastly, if the tumor is very large or it is involving the optic disc, it is involving the ciliary body, it is causing irreversible loss of vision, painful blind eye, we have to take out the entire eyeball, the surgery known as enucleation. And if the tumor is, uh, I told you, if it can be local spread, if it is uh, involving the sclera or the orbit, we have to take out, along with the eyeball, we have to take out the orbital tissues, that is muscles, we have to take out sometimes a part of bones, eyelids as well, that surgery is known as exenteration. After that, we can know there are some findings which further after enucleation, we get the sample, we can send to the pathological uh, lab and find out whether what was the prognosis. The prognosis depends on the type. So there are basically three types of uh, uh, choroidal melanoma, uh, spindle shape A, B, epithelioid. Here we can see uh, the point to remember is epithelioid tumors have the poorest prognosis and also immunohistochemical markers are also done nowadays to confirm whether it's a melanoma or not. HMB 45, S100 are, the, are, two of, are two of them. Now, thank you Saurav for an extensive discussion and we have discussed the case from the clinical scenario, from radiological perspective, from the fundoscopy findings to pathological findings and treatment alternatives available. So I hope you enjoy this episode of Unplugged and our goal in the Unplugged series is to you know, give you an integrated picture and that integrated picture is unique because even if you notice today the Medical Council of India is also strongly recommending integrated approach in learning rather than learning a subject you have to learn the approach that how in a real team scenario in the hospital how different uh, individuals and different you know team members they work towards you know from diagnosing to treating the patient and how prognosticating as well so that was the entire message that we wanted to give through this video. If you enjoy this video, do write to us in the comment section. Do follow us on Damseli channel on YouTube and Damseli page on Facebook for more such videos. We look forward to hearing from you. Thank you. Thank you very much.